all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how's it going? It's me, not P. I'm an undercard attraction at Porky's Corner. I'm, I'm like a, a Frank Warren undercard on Porky's Corner. So, today's video, I'm going to do a heavyweight video today. I'm just going to talk heavyweight boxing uh, at the minute. Uh, I've got a bit of an exclusive that I'm going to announce. So, I've just heard back that Huey Fury is going to fight Michael Hunter on Sky. So, yeah, it's a great fight for, for Huey. Huey. Huey's actually uh, number four in the WBA and Michael is number two. So, it's a really good fight for Sky. I think it will be a, a stacked card. I don't know if it's a pay-per-view fight, but I know it will be a stacked card on Sky. Really good fight for Huey. You know, he didn't get any real big opportunities this last couple of years. He's been kind of in limbo with, with the whole promotional outfit. And, and now he's with Sky. He, he's got a really, really good fight. It's a brilliant fight for him. I think Huey wins that fight convincingly. I think he beats Michael Hunter. But Michael Hunter's... A really good opponent for him at this stage of his career. He has got a, a high WBA ranking. You know, he's got those, you know, you look at the you look at them records wise, you, you know, Huey lost to Pavetkin, but Hunter drew with Pavetkin and should have had the decision that, that night. So it, it, it makes sense that, that that they're both fighting at this stage of their career. It's it's like a crossroads fight for both of them. And it's a dangerous fight for the both of them. And I think it's a brain, brain fight. I think, as I say, Huey wins that fight convincingly. And it's, it's good to see. The WBA seems to be kind of opening up a bit more. We, we've got uh, Andy Ruiz fighting Luis Ortiz. They're both highly ranked. And we've got Trevor Bryant now fighting uh, Triple D. That, that's been announced that's going to happen on the 11th of June in Miami, in a casino, just outside my I'm not even going to try and pronounce the, the casino's name. So that, that fight's happening too in the WBA. So what's going to happen? What, what do I think happen? I think the winner of Huey and Michael Hunter will, will fight the winner of Trevor Bryant and Daniel Dubois, which is a brilliant fight. Absolutely. Now that's of course if if uh, Bryant and Dubois actually happens, we have had this whole Don King arbitration, Frank Warren. It's it's been announced anyway, so that that's a really good fight too. But going back to Huey, yeah, it's it's a fight that he needed in this stage of his career. You know, he he had a very he was matched very quickly. But I don't think there's anything wrong with that in, in boxing. You know, if you're going to compete, you should be matched. Now, I think the heavyweight landscape the last two years has, has been backed up. It, it's, it's been on hold, especially with the whole Deontay Wilder, uh, Tyson Fury arbitration. that they had that trilogy, that great trilogy. Now, we're, we're waiting on Usyk. And Joshua to be announced. I think that's going to happen really soon. And the whole Tyson Fury. Will he retire? Will he, will he not retire? So it's good to see the heavyweight division is actually moving on. And, and getting somewhere. It, it's been a frustrating couple of years. And I'm sure it's been a frustrating couple of years with Huey. You know, at the tail end of his, 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 his tenorship with, with Sky. There didn't seem to be nothing happening. Eddie just didn't seem to be doing anything for them at all. Especially, you know, when Huey was taking fights against, you know, he took that Pavetkin fight at really, really short notice. So, it's great to see for Huey. It's a great fight for him. I think he wins it and it'll be good for him. He's number four in WBA. If he wins this, he could probably go right up to number one contender. Depending on what happens in the Trevor Bryant and Daniel Dubois fight, so that's a great that's a that's a Porky's Corner exclusive, right there. 
Okay, heavyweight division. People have been asking me all week, what do I think about Tyson Fury? Will he retire? Will he not retire? My opinion, I don't think he does retire. Why? Because he had that massive, massive purse bid. You know, that that's gonna be that's gonna be the bargaining chip now for, for fights. That that's that's what he draws. He knows now he, he's drew a record gate. And his bargaining chip now is, well, I draw a record gate. Frank Warren's come back and says that today that Tyson Fury and Dillian White did more than Klitschko and Joshua at Wembley. I think the, the number was there of, of around about 1.6. That's, that's brilliant. They haven't got the conf- confirmed numbers. But that seems a very healthy number for uh, Mr. Frank Warren, as as he said in, in his video the other day. And he seemed quite confident and quite cocky and quite happy. About it. I love cock. I like I like heel Frank Warren. I think he's absolutely comedy. So I do. I think he, he's hilarious. But that's a really good number. So that's what Tyson's worth now. And wherever he goes next, the deal with top rank is done done so he's just doing the right thing and sitting back and waiting and waiting and waiting and see technically he can't really do anything now until Joshua and Alex Alexander Usyk has been announced it's going to be another six months after they fight 68 months depending on the severity of the camp and the fight so he's going to be it's going to be 10 months away before he fights. So he's playing a shrewd game. The WBC have come out and said that they will support him, but they need to know what's happening. So the WBC, so so think about this. The WBC, or the sanctioning body, they get a percentage of the purse bid. Okay, So the higher the purse bid, the higher percentage that they get. So it makes business sense for them and that that title stays in Tyson Fury. So if they forget vacate the belt and say Joseph Parker and Joe Joyce goes for the vacant belt and that's a million works out a million pounds. They get a quarter they get they get a percentage of that, which is gonna be really, really low. Or do they keep the belt in Tyson and do they have a $40 million purse bid or split that they get a percentage of? So they're going to do what they can to keep that belt on him, but they need sanctioning fees. Sanctioning fees for the heavyweight division is obviously in all the sanctioning bodies. That's where they make a lot of money. So what will they do? Will they make Tyson the franchise champion? Did he make him champion in recess? I, I think there's a rule there in WBC. If if you retire WBC champion, you can come back and get a a, a straight shot. Just like Fatale. Fatale actually retired champion in recess. So he could come back and, and, and get a, a straight shot. So... Will they or won't they strip him? No way will they strip Tyson Fury. He is their flagship fighter. He's all over their website. He is their... They're making belts for him. They're making rings for John. They're making... I don't know... Scarf belts for, for, for Sugar Hill. So they... Ha, they make a lot of money off Tyson Fury. So I don't think they'll... They won't strip him. They won't strip him. So... Will he be franchise champion? I think they'll make him franchise champion or they'll just wait it out and say, well, we don't need to call him mandatory for six months and they'll wait it out then. You can see Deontay Wilder waiting in the wings. He hasn't won a fight in three years. Lost two by stoppage. Lost by stoppage loss. So, yeah, he's waiting in the wings. He draws money as well for them. He was their record champion over 10, over, what, 10 years? defences, something like that there. So he was he was 
their flagship fighter at the time. He's American. He draws. He, you know, at the time he was. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with with him. Where does he go? Does it end up? Does it end up? Deontay Wilder, Dillian White. Where does Dillian White go from here? Uh, I personally think he'll go to Sky. I think he'll go to Sky. Um, I don't think he'll go to the zone. As I've said, the zone don't have a pay per view platform to work off. So the money that he was getting at Sky, you don't get the Sky money at that the zone. No way. You don't get that Sky money at the zone. I think that platform would be better for Dillian White. Uh, there's there's better numbers. There's better viewership on it. I think Sky are trying to build it. Look at the amount of Olympians Sky have so signed now over over other promoters. So Sky are building up really, really well. I think in two years' time, Sky will have probably the best stable out of all the promotional networks, and that ahead of 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 the zone and 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 ahead of of BT. So so they're building. They're building a young stable, but a stable in, in two, or, two or three years' time that will have a lot of quality quality fighters. So where, where does, does Joshua fit in, in all this? Well, Adam Smith's come out and said for months that he's confident that, that AJ stays with Sky. They had some sort of promotional managerial pack with him back when he turned over personally I think AJ will go with Sky I don't think there's that money in the zone I don't think the zone have they're they're conking up billions of pounds dollars to keep the channel going I think the whole BT sport thing was a massive massive blow to them where they wanted to add to their channel with different sports and grow it. So I think AJ will go with Sky. I think it was all dependent and if the zone bought BT, I think he would have went. But I think AJ will go with Sky and, and that pay per view platform. You know, it, it's tried and tested. It's a platform that, that can go on to BT sold off BT, it can be a platform that's obviously on Sky. It's a platform that bars can 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 tune in and and and, and watch that that the zone don't have. So it makes business good business sense for, for AJ. I think AJ will go with Sky. I don't think Addy sounds too confident on that. I think Dan Raphael was talking this week about the whole deal. He sources uh it it just makes sense for him to go to Sky. You know, if, if look at the money that he's generated through his career on the pay per view platform on Sky. So I, I think he'll go with, with Sky. It makes it makes sense. I don't think the zone have that money there. It's shaping up really, really well. We've got Martin Bacoli and Tony Yoka as well in the heavyweight division. That fight was put back. I think it's a great fight. It's a good fight for Hardcore boxers, boxing fans, it, 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 it's a purest fight. It's a pick em fight. I think Yuka obviously goes into it, the favourite, but Martin Bacoli is a really good fighter. Uh, really good fighter. It's going to be interesting. I, I think it's a kind of like a, a crossroads fight. It, 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 it's a similar type of fight to Huey and Michael Hunter. It, it's, it's a really, it's two competitive guys looking to go into that championship elite and, and get themselves in their position next year to to fight for a title. I really like Billy Nelson. I think he's a brilliant coach. I like him I like his interviews. I like him I'm talking. And he's been with Martin Bacoli a long time. So it's actually Michael Hunter and Bacoli are common foes that they have fought. Uh Hunter beat uh Bacoli. I think Bacoli desiccated his shoulder. That was on a, a Channel Five McGuigan show a few years back and I remember Hunter had Hasim Rockman in his corner for that fight. I think Hasim Rockman coaches him or advises him. Rockman's one of my favourite heavyweights of all time. I remember he knocked out Lennox Lewis in Johannesburg. What a what a fight that was. And the the, the war against Corey Saunders. Check that fight out. 
But yeah, Bokoli and Yoga is a brilliant fight, a really, really good heavyweight fight. Going on to now, Trevor Bryant and Daniel Dubois, Triple D, has been announced. I said it earlier in the video. It's the 11th of June in a casino in Miami. I'm not even going to pronounce, you know what my pronunciation's like on this channel, guys. I'm sorry. I can just about say Kalano, 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 Kano. So I'm trying to get that. So yeah, it's it's in a casino in Miami. It's It's got this weird tagline, fight for freedom and peace card. It's it's a Don Keen special, really. It's a, like a Don Keen waving the American flag in the in the nineties, isn't it? Really running around uh, Barry Hearn shows with his with his uh, sheepskin coats. But yeah, that is a a good fight. Personally, I think Daniel Dubois absolutely runs right through Trevor Bryant. I think Trevor Bryant is the worst heavyweight champion I've ever seen ever even worse than Manuel Char don't forget Manuel Char actually lasted rounds with with Fatale and the fight was stopped in a cut so I have to give him some sort of respect but Trevor Bryant is, is a he's the most out of weight out of shape uh he's a terrible heavyweight absolutely terrible heavyweight you know <laughs> The whole Don King WBA relationship is is another one as well, which which is strange. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. But it looks like Trevor Bryant has brought in Larry Holmes for this fight that to help coach him and work on his job. I, I tell you what, I think Larry Holmes could jump in, and spar with him, and and handle him. Right now, you know Larry Holmes, probably one of the greatest heavyweight champions of all time, probably the best job in heavyweight fighter ever Larry Holmes was a, an absolute genius of a fighter so he's brought him in to help him in camp and, and work on some technical things so it's good that he's taking this fight serious you know I thought his last fight against Jonathan Goodley was atrocious I thought he he lost it to a club fighter a five foot ten club fighter at heavyweight which is absolutely dire I think as I say Daniel Dubois will, will run right through him in about three rounds. And that sets up the winner of Huey and Michael Hunter. So that will be a brilliant domestic world title fight. It will be great. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. Still sitting here. What's happened to the B sample? Where is it? It's going to be really interesting to see the landscape of that, where that, that fight actually lands. But it, it's really positive for, for Huey and Daniel Dubois, two British fighters. On that undercard, it, it's it's strange. We, we've got uh, Dakari Scott, who has only beaten one fighter with a winning record and is now in the WBA rankings at 15. He's a Don Keane fighter. He's fighting Jonathan Goodry on that same card. If somebody pulls out, if, if, if Daniel Dubois, it looks like if Daniel Dubois pulls out, one of them will be inserted. So, Dakari Scott, another Don King fighter, he, he's not in the best of shape. Go and check him out online against, again, Jonathan Goodry, who I thought beat Trevor Bryant in that, in that fight. So, this is the whole, this is the heavyweight show I'm doing. I'm going to finish off now with Usyk and Joshua. Looks like it's going to happen. I don't know when, but I think it will be on Sky Box Office. I think it will be on Sky. I think Usyk beats him again. I think, I don't think being aggressive is something that Usyk hasn't seen before in his career. I think he's a master technician. I think he's every box ticked as far as uh, styles. He's over 300 amateur fights. He's undisputed cruiserweight champion. He's, on, he's unified heavyweight champion. He's a multiple amateur champion. So I think I think he's got everything there to, to beat AJ again. 
what does that leave next? I think probably after this will be Dylan White, AJ, or on Sky that they could always fight. I think Dylan White goes to Sky as well, or BT, and could fight probably the winner of Dubois, Bryant, but he's no W. I don't know where he is in the WBA rankings. So, but but down the line for for either the winner of Huey and Daniel Dubois down the line, I think there is uh, Dillian White. So Dillian White's got a lot of options. It's just depending where he goes. He has to go. He has to. He has to go to the promoter that's got options, and and I don't think Eddie's got the options in the UK for him. So he doesn't, and I don't think he's got the platform that the sell pay per view. Is Dylan Wade a pay per view fighter now? Standalone wise, no. Depending on who the opposition is, I think he could he could play a part. He could fight on a pay per view, but I don't think he he, he goes as a standalone uh, pay per view. So there you go. There is the heavyweight show. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's a Porky's exclusive, Porky's Corner exclusive. Huey Fury against Michael Hunter on Sky. I hope everybody enjoyed. Please like, tick and subscribe. And don't have nightmares. Peace out.